All right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it, and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you, but uh, the reality is you know you, and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. Hi guys, welcome back. Listen, sometimes we learn about water, sometimes we learn about sugar deprivation, and sometimes we learn about calories, right? And the side effects of different medications and surgeries. Today, I wanted us to look in detail on some of the diets that are going around YouTube. The one that we're gonna look at today is from a video by a YouTuber called Kendra Productions. And Kendra is gonna tell us about how she did the three-day egg fast. So this is three days of eating nothing but eggs, I assume, any way you'd like them cooked. I'm gonna be quiet real quick. Let's see how Kendra did with this egg challenge. I read you guys the egg fast rules, and then we're just gonna get straight into the video. Eat a minimum of six eggs per day. Eat one tablespoon of healthy fat per egg, and that can be butter, mayonnaise, avocados, heavy whipping cream, things like that. Okay, enjoy up to three ounces of cheese per day. Within 30 minutes of waking up, eat your first egg. A little tip for that, um, boil your eggs at night, so that way when you get up, you can go just go straight into eating your egg because 30 minutes of waking up in my house is like, it goes like five minutes, so... But yeah, uh, let's see, where was I at? Okay, doo -doo -doo. eat an egg every three to four hours. Stop eating three hours before bedtime. Add salt whenever you can because electrolytes are important, but not too much salt. <laughs> Condiments and spices are okay, i.e. Uh, hot sauce and pepper. Uh, drink six to eight glasses of water daily. Uh, more, if you need more, drink more, of course. Uh, let's see, you can drink diet soda, but a maximum of three per day. And then let's see, egg fast for a minimum of three days or a maximum of five days, okay? Okay, for you, those of you that are walking that can't see the screen right now, Kendra is weighing in on day one at 146 and basically a half pounds, right? And uh, she's embarking on a three-day challenge. You can go up to five days, apparently. But with her situation, she's going to do a three-day challenge of eating nothing but eggs. All right, let's see how this goes. Sounds kind of gnarly. All right, hey, guys. So this is going to be my first meal. Um, I'm going to have boiled eggs. I'm probably only going to eat two of these because for some reason when they're boiled, I get fuller faster versus if they were scrambled. But I'm going to eat two of these boiled eggs. And I have my coffee and I have heavy whipping cream for the fat because I don't want to start out with cheese first thing in the morning. <laughs> but I will have. All right, guys. So this is going to be my lunch. This is two eggs and an ounce of cheese. I have some of this um, Fiesta cheese on my plate. And then this right here is just fried up mozzarella. That's all that is. Ooh, Kendra, I thought that was bacon. That's fried up cheese. Ooh, I don't even know if that will taste good. Is. So yeah, this is going to be my lunch and I'm going to get to chowing down. I'm still feeling good, guys. My energy is still pretty good. All right, I'll talk with you at my next meal. So I already ate my lunch, but I got a little bit hungry. It's been about like an hour, maybe close to two hours. And um, so this is... Um, I guess like a snack or something, but you're supposed to eat in meals, but I'm very hungry. So I just made me two more boiled. Well, I already had these made, but I'm going to have um, two more boiled eggs. One has lemon pepper and one has hot sauce. Hey guys, so here is my dinner. I'm having three um, deviled eggs. I used a little um, jerk seasoning and didn't have any sugar in it. And this right, oh, hold on. This right here is some fried mozzarella. Okay, I will see you guys. Okay, the first time I thought the mozzarella was bacon, and this time I thought it was a hash brown. So apparently the crusty stuff is always going to be some cheese, right? She needs a little paprika on those deviled eggs, and they'd be, mwah, they'd be perfect. 
guys later. So it is, I had a bite of some broccoli while I was fixing my kids their dinner. And, but I don't think that should really affect anything. Um, but yeah, I have a, like a slight headache. I feel like it's, it's coming on. Um, my energy is actually, it feels the same, but I feel like I'm starting to get tired now. I've been drinking a lot of water. I've been peeing a lot today. Um, but yeah, so far it is so good. I can, even though it's, um, even though it's just the first day, I'm actually starting to get tired of eggs. So I don't know. I may try to make like some egg pancakes or something tomorrow. I'm going to get my weight earlier, but I forgot, so... You throw a, I was one, I think 46, so that's like four pounds. This is day two. This is my breakfast. I'm gonna have two hard boiled eggs and I got some lemon pepper seasoning on them. And this is my coffee and I have heavy whipping cream as my fat. Okay. Hey guys, so for lunch today, I will be making egg pancakes and I'm using this recipe. It calls for four eggs and four ounces of cream cheese. You can add a uh, vanilla and cinnamon if you want. I'm gonna add that to mine and I'm gonna fry it up in this Kerrygold butter and I will come back. I'm gonna use my little um, blender, this little, I forget what you call it, but these little bitty mini blenders. Uh, look at my pancake. I done messed up. I don't know why, but she keeps making things that look different. That looks like a pancake to me. Doesn't that look like a pancake to you? By the way, if you've tried the three egg challenge before, even if you didn't make it through, tell us in the comments, tell us what your experience was. I love eggs. I bet I could eat eggs for two or three meals, but I don't know if I could do it for two or three days. Tell us if you think you could make it. Flipping it, but it's okay. I'm still gonna eat it. <laughs> All right, guys, so here are my egg um, pancakes. And this one came out all right. It got a little bit burnt, but it's still whole. And then I have a bunch underneath that uh, kind of fell apart while I was trying to turn it. But yeah, I'm going to have these. I got some, oops, turn that around. I got some sugar free uh, syrup. I'm not going to add a whole lot of this because. For some reason, even these artificial sweeteners tend to make me more hungry. So that's why um, I'm only going to add a little bit and I'm eating this at lunch, not with my dinner. With my dinner, it'll be uh, a more savory egg, probably like a, just a scrambled egg and cheese. But anyway, I'm going to get to eating this. I'm not really, really a completely hungry, hungry, but I know that I need to eat. So I'm going to keep eating. Um, so far, it's so good. All right, hey guys, so this is going to be my dinner for day two. Okay, this looks good. Yes, it looks a little bit like the apple pie treat from a Hungry Man, you know, TV dinner, but it's eggs. But it looks tasty, doesn't it? Looks really, really tasty. Two, two scrambled eggs and some sharp cheddar cheese, and it was um, scrambled in the curry goat butter. All right, guys. Okay, guys, so this is the start of day three. And, all right, guys, so this is day three breakfast. I'm probably going to eat about two, maybe three boiled eggs. I know I'll eat at least two. And here is my black coffee with my heavy whipping cream and some stevia. All right, guys, I'll see you guys with my next meal. Wouldn't that be funny if it was really chocolate milk? She's like, I am so sick of these eggs. Give me some chocolate milk. And then right when she goes off screen, she's being fed pizza and steak. Couldn't that be something, wouldn't it? This is going to be my lunch. I'm very, very, very tired today. But this is um, three scrambled eggs. Um, scrambled. My brain is so fogged right now. But this is three scrambled eggs um, cooked in the curry gold butter. And um, I believe it's an ounce, maybe a little bit more ounce of um, cheese. Some kind of cheese. I can't even think straight. Some, some um like some mild cheddar cheese. All right guys, so this is gonna be my dinner. This is day three, this is the last meal. Oh, I'm so tired of these eggs, but I have two hard boiled eggs um, with some jerk seasoning and a little uh, 
fried mozzarella and the curry cold butter. Yeah, I'm so ready to be over with this, y'all. So I'm going to eat this and hopefully it keeps me satisfied for the rest of the night. I really am so glad that she did this, that she stuck by it so that we can see what it's like because people are contemplating doing something like this, right? But they wanna see somebody go through it first, right? So I'm glad that she stuck with it, but I'm also glad that she's super candid. She's letting us know from day one, not the most fun, most enjoyable you know, thing to eat that many eggs in this concentrated amount of time, yet nothing else. Yeah, bravo, Kendra, bravo. Okay, all right, I will be back uh, tomorrow morning with my final weigh in. My final weigh in is 137.8. I am excited about the results. I lost 8.8 .8 pounds in three days. What? 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 Now, I'm not that naive. I know that uh, some of that or a lot of that was just water and waste getting out of my system, but I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm happy about that. Each day my appetite just went, it just decreased, decreased, decreased. Now, on day three, I felt so horrible. When I woke up, I was just so tired. My mind was foggy. My lips were dry. My breath was ah. Uh. And then as I showed you guys in the beginning of the video, I take these uh, daily fiber. These are really important. It's just psyllium husk. Can y'all see that? I'm sorry if this didn't focus, but it's just, they're just psyllium husk pills. You can buy um, psyllium, psyllium husk in pills or in powder, and um, they just keep you regular. These are these are good to take, period, even if you're not doing the excess. They're good to take. And um, another thing that helped me out because I made sure I got in at least 75 ounces of water per day. I, I walked every day in the morning about between 20 and 30 minutes I will walk which is actually a lot less than the exercise that I normally do every day but since I was taking in um, a limited amount of food and limited amount of calories I didn't work out as much also I didn't have that much energy another thing is that I sweat a lot like this made me think to back when I was a teenager I used to wear jackets a lot because I used to have a sweat problem I used to sweat a lot and I don't want people seeing the sweat under my armpits and all that but I don't know what it is about eating eggs or if my body's just trying to burn through um the fat or the the lack of sugar I don't know but I sweat a lot y'all I sweat a lot I peed a lot and what else I think that's it I think that's it now um would I do this again? Probably not. It's a little bit extreme. It is a little bit extreme. And I love how she said that, you know, she might do it in a pinch. You know, you have a wedding that you got to go to and you got to take pictures and you really feel like if you lose five or six pounds in a quick two or three days that you'll be able to take your pictures better. She lost almost nine pounds. That's amazing. But she didn't really feel too good about it, right? She felt like she was in a fog and stuff. So before you guys start doing this crazy diet, just remember, I think you should take Kendra's advice. Just do it if you have something important, but make sure you check with your doctor, make sure it's safe for you and your specific condition, okay? I want you to know that I checked out her channel. She doesn't usually do videos like this. She actually does Bible studies. Her faith is super important to her. So I urge you visit Kendra Productions, the YouTube channel, and subscribe. With that being said, go grab your shoes. Let's go for a walk. All right, guys, happy Sunday. We are literally heading in to our first month together. Now, I know for some of you it's two weeks, for some of you it's three, and for some of you, you might be brand spanking new. But what a great day to get some extra credit in. I know you've prepared for your normal half hour jaunt around your neighborhood, but today let's make it, uh, let's make it a little bit more intense. Let's go for 45 minutes. Are you with me? I can do this. You can do this. We can do this. Let's do this.
Good morning, everybody. Listen, normally when I wake up, I occasionally check news stories, but they're always the same old news stories, right? They're talking about President Biden or they're talking about former President Trump, right? They might be talking about this, that, and the other with regards to sports that are going on, right? With the Final Four and the uh, NCAA basketball tournaments, you know, for March Madness. Or they might be talking about, you know, just the usual stuff. Today, however, there was not one, not two, but three stories that I found quite interesting. And I'm sure you'll hear about them before I tell it to you. But one of the stories I heard was, I guess, apparently earlier today or yesterday um, in Australia, Sydney, Australia, I guess a person, a 40-year-old man, went on a stabbing rampage inside a Sydney, Australia mall. So check it out. He killed six people, again, by stabbing them. So we're not talking a quick death by a gunshot to the head or anything. We're talking a painful, horrific, in-your-face type attack, right? (coughs) And... He killed six people, he injured eight. One of the eight that he injured is a nine-month-old baby who is literally clinging to life in a surgery. And apparently the man himself was shot to death by authorities uh, when they finally got there. So, I don't know about you, but there's only one or or two things that are worse than when a person goes on a shooting rampage. I would call this one of them. You know, at least with a shooting rampage, you can hopefully, you know, go through a little shock or what have you. I don't know what happens when a person just gets painfully stabbed to death. And then to go from one victim to another, oh my God, that must have been absolutely horrific. I wonder if we're going to find out that the guy was uh, a terrorist or if we're gonna find out that uh, he had mental disorders. You know, I don't care how sane of mind you are. If you're taking people's lives, you gotta have some sort of mental disorder. So I'm not a big fan of counting mental illness as an excuse for those type of uh, brutal type killings. So, uh, you know, my thinking is I hope that uh, in the future uh, these things can be avoided It's so crazy to me. We always hear how the government knows and sees everything we're doing. We always hear that our phones are able to spy on us. Yet, and we always have fears that people are spying on us, right? Yet somehow, some way, even if that's true, apparently apparently it's not true for everybody because you'd like to believe that if authorities knew about this guy in advance, you'd like to think that they would do preventive measures to stop it. I, uh, I know that in that movie with Tom Cruise back in the day, they thought about things like pre-crime and stuff. And I don't like the idea of people being arrested before they make a crime, but it would be kind of cool if we had the ability to figure stuff like that out. Or would it be just like that movie was where it's not such a great thing? Crossing the big road today, taking you guys into another neighborhood where we're going to talk about two other people that are up to no good. So the thing in Australia freaks me out, but at the same time, I think the reason that it happened in Australia with the stabbing incident is they probably have different gun laws and restrictions out there, because I have to assume if the guy would have had a gun, he probably would have... uh, would have done the same thing with a gun. The idea that he's able to stab that many people and hurt that many people is kind of shocking because you'd like to think that while one person's screaming and being attacked, you'd like to think that people would be able to get away from a situation like that. But then again, who knows how it happened? Was he finding people one-on-one in a certain clothing or department store? and stabbing them and you know who knows maybe they were in shock and couldn't let out a scream i don't really know the situation 
So the other two things that I want to share with you, because I don't have much information, you know, when you hear about horrific crimes in other countries, you hear about it in passing. But if you guys are interested, you guys can obviously Google guy kills six in Australia before being killed himself. Uh, and I'm sure it'll pop right up on your screen. It happened uh, once again in a mall in Sydney, Australia. But uh, golly, I, you know, if I had a friend or a loved one that was killed by somebody, getting killed by, by stabbing is probably one of the gnarliest, most painful ways that you could uh, go. So uh, for all those people that were killed and injured, you know, prayers go out to you. Hopefully you guys all recover speedily. And there's a nine month old in surgery that could use our prayers and thoughts and well wishes too. Hopefully that nine month old can grow up and not have any type of psychological scarring from this situation. But if that baby has any physical scars, they're gonna grow up and be the last to learn where that scars, where those scars came from. And they're gonna constantly worrying, wonder why their parents, you know, have these psychological issues. Cause let's be honest, those parents for the rest of their life are gonna go up into shopping areas and they're gonna be looking over their shoulder and they're always gonna be wondering, is this the day that somebody attacks us? That's why I, uh, that's why I think we need to provide tougher punishments for criminals. Now, in this guy's case, he, he got killed himself, so he's not going to be able to hurt anybody any further, but there's a lot of times where people do heinous things, and before you know it, they're out on the street again, and, you know, those are the reasons that we have a lot of people with PTSD, and again, could you imagine you grow up and you've got some scars on your body, you don't really know why, you don't know why your parents are so overprotective? And then maybe when you're old enough, they tell you the story about how you were almost brutally stabbed to death as a little baby. And then you have to explain to a child how there are some men and women in this world that have such a seed of evil in them that they would actually try to attack and kill a nine month old child. I mean, can you think of anything more despicable in your life, you know? So the other two stories involve the state of Texas and doctors, which make it really scary. There's a uh, anesthesiologist in Texas named Ronaldo Ortiz. This guy was tainting IV bags. One of his victims was a doctor, and I have her name here. So check this out, Dr. Melanie Caspar and her husband, John, were in their home when Dr. Melanie came home and she was feeling under the weather. So she decided to administer herself an IV bag. And according to her husband, John, a couple minutes later, he heard her doing some blood curdling screams where she begged him and implored him to call the paramedics immediately. Because apparently, the anesthesiologist, Dr. Ronaldo Ortiz, tainted or poisoned her bag with a medication called Upivacaine. I have no idea what Upivacaine is, but if you go by the last part of that word, cane, I'm assuming it's something that numbs, because it was given to people when they were literally under surgical care, but not Dr. Ronaldo Ortiz's surgical care. He just tainted the bags and slowly but surely there's video of him placing one bag at a time into a banked area where they had multiple bags. So if you were that unlucky person like Dr. Melanie Gaspar and you get that bag, you're in a ton of trouble. <laughs> Luckily, she uh, wasn't unconscious and she, and she was able to alert her husband Unfortunately, this horrible experience uh, and her being aware of it before she died did not save her life. The same uh, Ronaldo Ortiz character tainted another bag and, and it affected an 18 or 19 year old kid 
who was going in for a rhinoplasty. So imagine the last thing you hear is your doctor saying, breathe back from, you know, 100, right? 99, 98, you know, and you're out. And then apparently another doctor came in because while this kid was out and the IV bag was going through his veins, right? Apparently he started frothing out of the, out of the mouth and turning gray. And another doctor came in and said, hey, let's switch out that ivy bag. And the only reason he did that was because some previous week before, they had another weird IV bag situation. So anyway, come to find out this Dr. Ronaldo Ortiz, again, he was an anesthesiologist, somebody that you're putting your life and trust into, right? Because when you need a surgery, you're gonna need an anesthesiologist. And apparently he had one or two little businesses that were really struggling with money, failing to make payroll. Apparently he had a lot of nice homes and a lot of nice vehicles. It's like the story is always the same. Okay with punishing and, and doing cruel things to other people. Meanwhile, you're living a life of luxury yourself, right? Can't pay your employees, but at the same time, you know, you make sure you buy your fifth or sixth, you know, luxury vehicle in your second or third home. Just seems like it's always the same old story. The good news is Dr. Ortiz has been behind bars apparently for the last year or so, uh, just waiting trial. So that's one thing you can say about Texas. They don't seem to mess around. If you're the bad guy, you're, there's a, a there, <laughs> there's someone coming for you. In the same state of Texas, you're not gonna believe this one. Another Houston doctor, I don't think I wrote down his name. By the way, that doctor that uh, died because of Dr. Ortiz's uh, tainted IV bag, she was part of the Baylor Scott and White Surgery Center crew there. So, you know, you're literally killing your coworkers and, your, and patients of the hospital, but you're not doing it on your patients. You know, so in other words, he was literally a diabolical killer trying to kill random people. Just really seems horrible, doesn't it? Tell me your thoughts on that. Is this not the scariest thing ever? So this next doctor is not in Dallas, like Dr. Ortiz. This next doctor is actually in Houston. Okay, and I do have his name here. So Houston doctor, Steve Bynum. His uh, patients were on a national list to get a liver transplant, right? So these are people that are already sick as a dog and they need to wait on a list for a transplant. This guy was found guilty of, manipul of manipulating the lists. Check this out, not so that his patients would get priority. You know, you could kind of understand that in a cruel, crooked, crooked world, right? That, hey, he's getting his patients names higher on the list and therefore hurting other people. No, it's worse than that, guys. He actually found a way to exclude his patients from the list. Could you imagine you're going to a doctor? He's got to put your name on a list. Because your name's on a list, there's never a guarantee that you're going to live long enough to get your liver or your kidney or whatever you need, right? And he found a way to manipulate it where all of his patients never made it to the top of that list, thus ensuring that they would have a death sentence. Or I don't know with liver or kidneys, you know, with kidneys, you can probably be on, di be on dialysis for an extended amount of time. And who knows, if I were to deep dive more, you'd probably find out that that's what he was doing. By keeping your patients in a situation, you're able to milk the system, so to speak. But my God, if that's how people are getting ahead going forward by milking the system and costing people and patients their lives, does it get any scarier than that? Oh my God. One of my friends that I uh, grew up with, Chris, he lived in that house back there. That was his house. I would walk up here to this park, he would walk down from his house to this park, and then we would walk to high school together. I had another friend that I never mentioned uh, when I was talking about my four friends the other day. His name was Mark. 
His last name was, well, we'll just say it started with a G. Mark G. Mark actually was a better friend to me than I was to him. He's the one where I told you guys a long time ago that he would keep dollar bills and quarters and stuff on his desk and on his tables and just strewn around his house. And I would go into his apartment and we were friends and all, and I didn't see myself as an enemy, but you know, I would take 50 cents here and a dollar there, and then we would go swimming and I would put the money in a machine and somehow I validated that as not really stealing it. I was just buying a soda, but you wanna know something? I was stealing. How much money did I steal altogether? Altogether, probably less than $3, you know? Not a huge deal. Something that if I were to tell him and admit that to him today, he'd probably laugh and giggle it off. No big deal. But he was that type of friend that if I needed to borrow 100 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever the situation is, he would have been there for me. In other words, he was the type of friend that you would want to have for life. And I just... I didn't treat him as well as I should have. Was I horrible to the guy? No, I don't think so. And again, my uh, 20 year old self at the time, I never really saw it as me doing anything horrible and evil, but I think we all have friends that treated us poorly in life. But if we were to be honest, I think there's a lot of friends that maybe we treated poorly in life, you know? I, uh, I know enough in my life to know that we are not all saints. And I know that when, whenever you're dealing with a bad person, they could have a good side, right? They're not 100% bad. But I also know that many people are not 100% good, right? If you have two or three children, as much as we hate to admit it, sometimes parents treat one child better, better than the others. Sometimes as grandparents, we can be guilty of treating one grandchild better than the others. Don't know why people are like that. I think it's because with anything, you know, you like basketball, you like football, but for some reason, you find yourself watching football a little bit more than basketball. Doesn't mean you don't love basketball. You just really enjoy football, right? And I think sometimes parents and grandparents can be guilty of treating one of their family members with a little nepotism, right? A little favoritism. If you have an experience like that, maybe you have middle child syndrome where, uh, you know, you feel like the younger child was babied and you feel like the older child was given a lot of freedoms and you were kind of stuck in the middle. Let us know in the comments. It's not always easy to, you know, admit, hey, I've got that middle child syndrome, right? Sometimes the youngest child feels like they were never given the freedoms of their older siblings, you know? And then sometimes the older siblings feel like they lost their childhood because they were responsible for babysitting the younger ones, you know? I, uh, I've seen a lot of people growing up during the years where you'd be like, hey, let's go to the movies, let's go do this, that, and the other. And it was their job on Friday night to babysit their younger siblings so their parents could have a date night, you know? Sometimes these things happen. If you were the babysitter for your parents and you didn't make any money from it, let us know in the comments. And if you were your parents' babysitter for the younger ones and you did make a little money on it, let us know that too. Did you have a good arrangement with your parents or was it one of those bummer deals where you missed out on half your weekend all the time, you know? I, uh, I love walking and I always complain about this and it's not super hot, but you can tell the way the sun hits you when it's gonna be a super hot summer in Arizona. And don't get me wrong, there's no such thing as a cool summer in Arizona, but you'd rather have a summer where it reaches a high of about 110, 112 than 120. But I just have a feeling it's gonna hit the 120s this year. Oh. And that's not gonna be fun. I've already made a proactive plan that if I absolutely have to, I will change my whole schedule, gang, so I'll start going to bed at like nine or 10 and waking up at four if I absolutely have to, to get out my door at a time when it's not too, too hot. 
So, all right, let's get some comments and discussion going. What do you think of this? What is worse, the guy tainting bags to kill people or the guy that's keeping his patients off of a national list to receive a new liver or kidney? Because I think it was liver and kidneys that were the guy's specialty. Oh my God, that is just devastating. Could you imagine you've got a family member or a loved one on this list, or at least you think they're on this national list. And the list itself is horrible because what you're hoping, as horrible as it sounds, let's be honest, you're hoping that a kidney or organ donor passes away and you're not hoping for it. I, I, that's the wrong choice of words. No, no one's hoping for that. But you know, in order for you to get an organ, somebody has to lose a life, right? Now, somebody out there might say, Jesse, not necessarily. Sometimes people can donate a kidney or donate this, that, and the other. That's true, but in some cases, you don't have two kidneys, right? Like I assume with a liver, you're probably waiting for somebody to perish. I don't think you can live with, without your liver, right? So it just kind of amazes me because I know that doctors take the, uh, the oath, you know, to do no harm. And I, I've always felt like most of the doctors I meet are upstanding citizens and wonderful human beings. But the truth is, there's a little bit of evil out there. And uh, man, when you can't trust the people that are there to take care of you and to help you get better, and you end up dying and stuff, I guess that the only thing you can hope for is that you end up being able to sue the doctor and the hospital and get a lot of money. But I think we'd all agree I'd rather have my you know, 18, 19 year old son, I'd rather have, I'd rather have my family than the money, you know, and I'm pretty sure you guys feel the exact same way, you know? So that's a tough, tough deal. Now, one of the things that I try to tell you guys that when you're on your walk, you don't necessarily have to focus on world events, you know, but um, it's kind of hard not to think about these things. They really make you think. I think the reason, I think the reason these doctor appoint, or these doctor stories in Texas kind of struck me today and made me want to talk about them was because over the last couple years, I've had to go to the hospital a couple of different times for various surgeries, right? I had a double hernia surgery on the front side of my body. And then of course I've been telling you guys how I had the surgery on my tailbone area. And uh, I can remember in both surgeries talking to the anesthesiologist. And in both situations, I felt like the anesthesiologist was just a great person. You know, they really go in there and they say, hey, want you to know that based on your body weight and the fact that you're not smoking, I think, uh, I think we're gonna be just fine, okay? And they really reassure you and make you feel like, yeah, your life is in their hands, but I've done this a thousand times, you're gonna be good. You're gonna wake up and you're gonna have a wonderful life, you know? I never, and, I, and, I, and here's the crazy thing. I bet this anesthesiologist, Dr. Ronaldo Ortiz, and it's weird because on one show it said Renoso Ortiz. So if you look up and find out that his name is Renoso Ortiz, just know that I heard both names mentioned. But how many times did he have that same conversation with his patients? Now keep in mind what I told you earlier, he never poisoned his own patients. He would go to a bank or like a refrigerator where they kept these IV bags and he would just bring a solo bag with him and put it in the fridge. And the only reason that they caught him was because three or four weeks earlier, they installed a camera. Now that's scary because what that means is if you go back in history, did he poison any other bags that we don't know about yet? A lot of times we end up finding out after the fact that he didn't just, you know, hurt the two or three people that you hear about, you end up finding out that he hurt multiple people and that there were multiple victims. And some of those victims 
they never find you, you never find out you just assume they died during surgery and it just makes you wonder how many doctors and surgeons have gotten away with these type of things oh my god that's horrible may lightning strike them down if they're doing such things you know oh wouldn't that be great if occasionally a bolt of lightning did come down and it never hit good decent people it just took out bad people and so no matter who they were you could be like oh they had it coming what did they do you know i saw a picture online once and i think it's a real picture it's a video of this person they walk out their front door they get hit by lightning they wake up 10 seconds later, they start stumbling down the road and the lightning hits them again, right on top of the head. And then that led to another story I heard where there was a man, he's no longer alive, but apparently he was hit by lightning like eight to 10 times in his life. And you just gotta wonder, what did you do in a previous life that deserved you to get hit by lightning that many times, you know? By the way, I went into this neighborhood, walked down and around a park, came out the other side here, and it probably took a whole 20, 30 minutes. I think that's amazing how far you can walk. I want you guys, if you're on a walk right now, especially on a straight path or straightaway, stop if you would and turn around and just look how much distance you were able to cover. Does anybody else find that amazing? If you find it amazing just how far you can walk in 20 or 30 minutes, please put it down in the comments. And then after you put that you are amazed at how far you can walk, I want you to contemplate the idea that I do, which is maybe this weekend, maybe you could take a walk to a department store in your neighborhood. I mean, it's not gonna be in your neighborhood, but on the outskirts of your neighborhood. Maybe you can walk to the grocery store you know, we're entering our second month of this challenge. Is there a way you could start to apply any extra credit? You know, if you've decided that, hey, I'm just going to walk with Jesse, I'm not going to do the water thing and I'm not going to do the avoiding sugar thing, which is fine. Is there still a way that maybe you could up the half hour walk to 45 minutes on the weekend, if nothing else, right? And if, the, and if the weather feels absolutely gorgeous, maybe you go on a whole one hour walk. If you've been slowly but surely noticing that instead of a 15 or 20 minute walk, you're walking closer to 45 minutes or 60, put it in the comments. Maybe you're one of these folks that's unable to walk. You've got horrible legs, you've got horrible knees and joints, right? And just walking is atrociously painful for you, but you've been drinking more water than ever. Maybe that next baby step would be instead of adding water to what you normally drink, right? Because if you're drinking three Cokes, you're still drinking three Cokes. Maybe we can start to substitute a little bit, right? Maybe that could be your next baby step. Cut those three Cokes down to maybe one or two. And let's kind of note that, you know, hey, here in the second week of April, I went ahead and cut down on my soda consumption. And let's see how that affects you going forward. Some of you might not want to walk or drink a ton of water because maybe you enjoy drinking your crystal light or whatever it is you drink, right? Crystal light's good. Have you ever had that? God, they used to do a lot of crystal light commercials. I haven't seen a crystal light commercial in forever, but I always thought it tasted really good. But maybe you could still cut down on your sugar intake every one of these these three components by the way has a has an effect individually they don't have a huge huge effect but when combined god they have a huge they have a huge impact i see a lot of diets we just watched one on the egg diet and what was interesting is we see this girl kendra i believe is her name and Kendra's eating eggs and it's just for three days. And at first she's like, mm, I made this yummy egg and I'll talk to you next time for lunch. Guys, after the first day, she was sick of eggs. 
by the third day she said I'm never gonna do this again right or at least I don't think I am but she said something that's smart and telling and by the way when I show you the egg diet that they were doing the egg challenge or whatever you want to call it I wasn't doing it with the intent that you guys can do it too you know because I can picture somebody saying Jesse I don't want to eat eggs that's not really our diet I just thought it would be fun to kind of see what other people are doing to lose weight because the the battle is real I do think that if you had a wedding coming up or if you had an important you know important date or something it might not be a horrible idea to do the egg diet for a day or two Kendra lost eight pounds in three days but she was tired she had a lot of brain fog it wasn't something she liked she felt like it uh, made her breath not the best you know I never noticed that any food would make your breath horrible because I always followed the rules of brushing your teeth after you're done with a meal except for lunch you know if you're at work and you eat lunch you know you might not have your toothbrush with you but you want to know something if you're eating foods that are making your breath a little foul, you know, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to keep a tube of toothpaste and a toothbrush at your desk. But I'll tell you what, based on the stories that I talked about today, it might not be a good idea to share with your coworkers that you have toothpaste and a toothbrush because people are gross. People might do something to your toothbrush or your toothpaste. Those are things that you just want to put in your desk and don't tell anybody about, you know? Same thing with your food. Don't open your food and then put it in the company fridge because people could taint that. I used to uh, take a drink from, you know, wherever I went for lunch, Wendy's or, or uh, McDonald's or whatever. And I would put my, my drink in the company fridge and strange coworkers would drink out of my drink. Now that's not something that I did permanently. Once you find out people are touching your drink, you usually end up throwing it away and not keeping your not keeping your foods in the company fridge anymore but one thing you can do at least to ensure your safety is keep unopened bottles in there right if you have a bottle of uh, water or sports drink don't open the bottle seal it and put it in the fridge like you normally would just don't open that bad boy till you're ready to drink it you know there are too many bad people out there. Are you bad if you're stealing a drink out of your friend's water at, at work? Probably not a horrible person, but it is gross. And my God, what if you have some sort of lip condition? You know, you have some sort of STD on your lips. <laughs> Could you imagine that? You're drinking your, you know, you're drinking your drink. All of a sudden you come home and you got freaking... STD lips because <laughs> let's take that thought out of our mind I don't want any of you guys catching some disease because you're drinking out of your Gatorade bottle at work but let's be honest if that happened oh my god that could get a person in trouble too because you imagine if you were married all of a sudden you're going home and your husband or wife is like you gave me a disease you're like I, I didn't cheat on you or nothing what happened and then you realize, oh, is it these bubbles I have on my lips? It's gross. There's a lot of bad things. Hey, if you've ever heard of a nightmare story that an employee did to another employee or a coworker, put that in the comments. I would absolutely love to look into it, especially if it made the news or if you know if it's on YouTube. Any weird story that you think that I'd like to maybe take a look at, let me know because maybe I will take a look at it and maybe we could talk a little bit about it, you know? Somebody uh, asked me earlier this week, I think it was Sherry Ann, asked me if I could tell you guys a little bit about what I'm eating. You know, to be honest with you, I think you guys would be shocked that I eat many of the bad foods that we all eat, but I've made every one of those bad foods as good as I can make it. For example, when I do go to McDonald's or to Burger King for a Whopper or whatever the sandwich there might be, you know, it's no big deal for me to just get the sandwich. I, I don't get the fries and you know I'm drinking water so I don't get the drink so it's not that I'm eating healthy it's that the choice that I'm making is the healthiest that it can be it's not uncommon for me to bust out a knife and a fork and sometimes just eat the sandwich itself you know without the top you know without the top bun 
I still keep the bottom bun on. I just figure I, I don't need both of them, you know? So I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm hoping that these stories didn't bum you out. I, I'm hoping that you found them a little bit more interesting than maybe what we normally talk about, but keep going on your walk. It's the weekend. See if you can walk longer today. And we'll talk soon. Have a great day.